In this Wrestle Talk news, Vince McMahon breaking up a top WWE faction, Drew McIntyre's WWE future, Vince blocking Triple H hires, and more. Subscribe and enable notifications to always on for daily wrestling news videos. Support Wrestle Talk! In more ways than one, Triple H's creative reign of WWE began with damage control. Not just because he had to guide the company away from Vince McMahon's sexual misconduct controversy, but also because the very first match on the very first premium live event he fully had in charge saw him debut his ultimate lady faction. Mmm, ladies. Seeing the returning from injury Bailey, the returning from being released Dakota Kai, and the main roster new name call up of EO Sky, where Triple H then booked them incredibly strong for the next nine months. Oh no, wait, he booked them terribly. But that doesn't fit my Triple H good Vince McMahon bad narrative. Away with you, dissident critique. <laughs> Their faction, Damage Control, debuted on Triple H's first proper show, and they lost to Becky Lynch and her legend friends on WrestleMania 39 Night 1. Arguably, his last proper show in charge. Because in the days and week afterwards, Bailey's social media activity and behind the scenes reports suggest the faction is done. Just before WrestleMania 39 Night 2 started, Bailey tweeted, and sometimes the most romantic love story comes to an end. It prompted an outpouring of support and concern for Bailey, from fans and her fellow wrestlers alike. And of course, speculation she was one of those rumored names who would ask for her release with Vince now in charge. The latter was furthered when the act had their Raw After Mania segment changed last minute by McMahon, where Bailey was pulled from the show despite being there, and Kai and Sky went down for their tag team match alone, where they were easily beaten by Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez. PW Insider have since reported there is no expectation that Bailey is leaving WWE, and her social media posts are more likely her doing a storyline work. Additionally, Worked Wrestling notes she is listed internally as available to use for the 10th of April episode of Raw. Whether she will be used remains to be seen though. Dave Meltzer though has said in the Wrestling Observer that while there's nothing official, Damage Control could soon be breaking up. Although another report claims no one is talking about a split backstage. Sadly, it feels like the faction should go their separate ways now, following their mania loss to Becky Lynch after months of being stuck in the same feud. What do you think WWE should do with Bayley? Let me know in the comments, because I'll be replying to people from out of nowhere. If Bayley did leave, it should be an irreplaceable loss to WWE. Like, like literally, because Vince is reportedly blocking them from making any new hires. Thanks for your support on Patreon, the roller coaster, robber, a coaster, and the venerable Jesse Venerable. You too can get your own Patreon shout out by going to patreon.com forward slash wrestle talk. Last year, Triple H brought back 18 wrestlers that have been released under Vince's tenure. Tegan Knox, Sarah Logan, Emma, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, BFAB, Emma, Top Dollar, Ashante V. Adonis, Candice LeRae, Mia Yim, Bronson Reed, Emma, Dexter Loomis, Karrion Cross, Scarlett Bordeaux, Johnny Gargano, Braun Strowman, Emma, Dakota Kai, and Bray Wyatt. It's so many names you probably didn't realize I said Emma four times. That is a Triple H average rehire rate of six wrestlers a month from August to December 2022. 2023, by comparison, has seen Chelsea Green. That's, that's it. Technically also a one night only Nia Jax at the Rumble 2. The obvious thing that changed from 2022 to 2023 is Vince's ruthless power grabbing return, which included him seemingly forcing his own daughter from the board. I just don't want us to forget about that part when we talk about this, but he managed to effectively fire both his children from his company within a year, either side of being forced out due to a sexual misconduct scandal. Vince returning to the company in early January was allegedly to facilitate a sale of the company. Objective achieved with the UFC merger. Sale, but not really a sale, announced on the 3rd of April. But as part of that process, it's been reported WWE had stopped signing new talent. Fightful Select is reporting that the company has effectively been in a hiring freeze since January. That term hasn't been officially used behind the scenes, but it's a catchphrase that's been frequently used in conversation backstage. This explains why all the reports of WWE signings heading into this year just haven't happened, particularly heading 
return into Royal Rumble season, names like New Japan's Tama Tonga and former WWE tag team The Authors of Pain, original Paul Ellering variant, were heavily reported as being in talks to come in. In addition to that, other former New Japan star Jay White, who was arguably the hottest free agent in the industry in March, wasn't signed by WWE despite their previously being very high interest. It's said there was an issue in communication between the two sides, which led to talks breaking down, and White signing with AEW instead. Two interesting additional names Fightful mentioned WWE wanted are AEW and Ring of Honor wrestler Brian Cage, whose contract has now reportedly expired but there's still no update on whether he'll stay with AEW or go somewhere else, and former NWA champion Nick Aldis, who's been available since the end of last year, who Triple H was described as high on. Many of these names were reportedly in talks to sign with WWE, but they were left out in the cold when McMahon returned to the company, and all hires were put on hold. The talent was reportedly told that because of the impending sale, it was difficult to make things happen. Now the sale, again not a sale, it's a merger, is complete, we'll see if Vince lifts the hiring freeze, as it's already made them miss out on a Jay White and made for a pretty uneventful week of TV after Mania, with Triple H announcing the impending WWE draft. That could be the perfect time to debut some new additions. Which non-WWE stars would you like to see signed for the draft? Tell me, CM Punk return confirmed in the comments. Following the morale destroying Raw after Mania, not just for WWE fans, but for the locker room too, as it saw the destructive return of Vince's long-term booking ruining last-minute changes, the backstage atmosphere was said to improve at Friday 7th's episode of SmackDown. Unlike Raw, where Vince was physically running the show from gorilla position, McMahon didn't travel from LA to Portland to be at the SmackDown show. BW Insider report that while Vince was in creative meetings remotely, he didn't make any major changes to plans. Fightful write this led to significantly improved morale behind the scenes, but talent are taking a we'll see what happens approach to how TV will be going forward. Was the Raw After Mania a one-off flashback to the dark days of Vince and really it's going to be Triple H booking things, or will McMahon push his ridiculous ideas more consistently. Because as I said before, Triple H's creative reign has been nothing but six star riveting TV segments and matches for nine months! Anything bad that's happened recently must be in some way because of Vince McMahon. So presumably, Vince has also secretly been booking Drew McIntyre for the last year and a half. Drew was reportedly pulled from the 7th of April episode of SmackDown due to a health issue that predated Mania, but he wanted to slap Sheamus and Gunther in the face so much, he worked through injury to do what was arguably match of the week but his absence comes at the same time his long-term WWE status has been called into question. Wade Keller of PW Torch has reported McIntyre is unhappy with his money and recent creative. Now Fightful has revealed he has about nine months left on his contract, meaning he will be a free agent at the start of 2024, which is both plenty of time to negotiate new terms and also for Vince to screw up the entire company. There's always AEW, Drew, where professional wrestlers are always happy. Wait, what does that say? Santana was last seen in AEW's 2022 Blood and Guts match, where he suffered a severe knee injury. On top of that, he was rumored to have fallen out with his long-term tag team partner Ortiz behind the scenes, and had been publicly teasing on social media that he was waiting for his contract to expire. Well, turns out, even though he was teasing a late 2022 date for that, he is still very much under contract, or he's been paid for the duration of his injury. Fightful speculates the contract is still in place because it would have been extended due to his time recovery. Jeff Hardy is also nearing a return, if you believe his brother Matt. Talking on a video with Isaiah Cassidy, Matt revealed Jeff has just had eye surgery, and he'll be ready to return in five to six weeks, at which point he's hoping maybe six, eight weeks from now, hopefully, we can see some Jeff Hardy on AEW. Must be noted though that eye injuries were not the reason for Jeff's prolonged absence. It was his DUI arrest and subsequent suspension in June. That's all for the news portion of this video. Now stick around and watch me destroy Pete and Tempest. I'm coming for you, boys. Ha ha ha! Come on. What do we do? There's too many of them, they're too fast. The fact that Dwayne is in the main event of WrestleMania next year and I'm not makes me sick. We're not getting out of this, Pete. Damn it. This is the end, pal. I'm sorry. Who's your daddy, Montreal? With a tear in my eye. We're not getting out of this. 
But you are. Wait, what do you mean? Save yourself, run, get away. No, no, you can't do this. Just remember, Pete, it's L-I-W for life. Tempest, Tempest. Hey! WrestleMania 39 was largely very good, and if a certain something had happened, we'd probably be looking at it as a top five of all time WrestleMania, but everyone's a little bit peeved right now, and let's try and work out why that is. I'm Adam from WrestleTalk, and here are WWE's 10 biggest mistakes at WrestleMania 39.